one full month over 22 pounds lost This is Michael here with Basic to Badass. <clears throat> uh, just giving you guys uh, an update on our weight loss competition. Um, I'm down roughly about 19, 20 pounds since the start of this. I think it's, this is week three. Um, getting a good upper body workout today, some time on the bike. Gonna try to get some steps in with a walk here when I get done. <clears throat> kind of changed up my approach a little bit to uh, what they call a protein sparing modified fast. Um, getting roughly a little under a thousand calories a day um, high protein intake um, about three workouts a week struggled a few days uh, eating properly last week so um, we're on track still fighting through this um, good luck to the other guys competing here hopefully uh, you guys are staying on track too just want to touch base with you guys though and give you a little update Five minutes. Finally comfortable enough to take off my shirt. This doesn't really matter. Heard you shouldn't really be self-conscious about anything. Going barefoot. Ah, no one gives a shit. Still seems like there's lard on my phone. <clears throat> okay, 30 days, 23 pounds. I don't know what percentage of body fat that is or body weight that is, um, but pretty sure I'm in the lead because if Michael lost 23 pounds, uh, he would be behind me since his base weight was higher. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, if I work hard enough, because it's gonna be a matter of work in this contest, I'm gonna win, but I have to work twice as hard as he does since he started at a higher base weight and he has his nutrition on point my nutrition is on point though he calls it lazy keto which is not necessarily true because uh, I don't eat processed food and I heard in a definition somewhere lazy keto people eat processed food I suppose I do though eat processed processed food like quest bars occasionally right after I'm done eating a whole foods meal so we'll see Michael I don't think you're gonna win I think you're gonna lose um, and mainly because you're talking so much shit so uh, hope you lose currently reading a book by uh, Sheldon Richman. Actually, I'm almost done with it. What social animals owe each other? What social animals owe to each other? Sheldon Richman. And um, in it, he quotes a uh, Nobel Prize winning economist, James Buchanan, where he talks about why individual liberty is important. A lot of people use rights uh, arguments. A lot of people use, uh, I mean, the fact that, um, Free markets tend to maximize utility. 
Uh, and this is argued against here because, uh, of course, in the Misesian tradition, utility is not comparable and it can't be um, maximized in any aggregate form. All policies that attempt to do that don't like do it because it's not possible. He says, man wants liberty to become the man he wants to become. He does so precisely because he does not know what man he will want to become in time. Let us remove once and for all the instrumental defense of liberty, the only one that can possibly be derived directly from orthodox economic analysis. Man does not want liberty in order to maximize his utility or that of society of which he is a part. He wants liberty to become the man he wants to become. And what he's saying here is basically men don't precisely know what they want to become in moment to moment decisions are made uh, I think this is this is relevant to everything we're doing at basictobadass.com. We don't know exactly what sport, what kind of things we want to do, but in the process of making decisions and experimenting and, and working out and stuff like that, we become more knowledgeable at what fits us in particular and um, what works for us, what doesn't, what we're good at, what we're not, and what we need to double down on. And uh, I think reading books during some of these challenges is going to be important. So yeah, if you want a, if you want a really good book, get What Social Animals Owe Each Other by Sheldon Richmond.